Kevin Feige never wanted to do a Blade film. So you're trying to tell me, you are trying to tell me that for three years, you can't come up with a story about a half vampire who operates in daylight and hunts other vampires. You cannot come up with a story for a vampire hunter. It has taken you three years and you can't come up with a story for a vampire hunter. See, there's some things I'm going to say in this video that may shock you. They may disagree with you, but it's a fact and it's real. So I'm going to get very real in this video. So just bear witness. I'm going to get very real with this video. So let's let's start with Maheshala Ali. Let's start here. Um, when he was cast as Blade, I was like, okay, cool. Snipes, I feel could still play Blade, and I think has completely owned that role. But I was, you know what? He's a quality actor. And a good actor is a good actor, is a, is a, is a good actor. So, okay, this is a great actor. Let's see what he does with the role. Because remember, the first time I saw him, and I think the first time most people saw him, was House of Cards, where I think he played the character of Remy. And since then, he's gone from strength to strength to, to, to strength. Obviously, Moonlight... Um, Green Book, not like that book, Green Book, and you should also check him out. True Detective season three, True Detective season three. But this is what baffles me. You have a two-time Oscar winner, and you can't come up with a story for a two-time Oscar winner. You know, like, so again, because I've been part of film and the movie business, I just do, do a little bit about, about the movie business. A large part of the movie business is marketing. So, of course, you need a, a good story, you need a good film, but to get people to watch it, of course, you need a really good trailer, but marketing is key. And one of the big marketing things is, look who is starring in our film. Okay, what's this film about? What's the thing? Oh, but it's starring Denzel Washington. Oh. Oh, it's starring Vala Davis. It's starring um, um, a De Niro, a Pacino. It's oh, it's starring Kristen Bale. So it's like oh, it's starring Meryl Streep. Because oh, that's an actor who I know is very good, who has won the Oscar. So on the post, I can say two time, starring two time Oscar winner, starring Oscar nominee. That is a big marketing campaign. So you have an actor of this caliber who is a two-time Oscar winner, which helps for your marketing campaign. And you can't come up with a story. And it's so bad that you do realize that this has harmed his career. So he couldn't take jobs or take roles because he was waiting for a script to come through. Because remember, when you take a project, that's several months that you have to give up. Like most actors maybe do two films really a year, because to do one film, that's about four or five months taken out, out, out of your, your year. So most of your year is taken out just doing one film project. So Mahajali, obviously, he would have rejected. Bro, when you're a two-time Oscar winner, this, the scripts are coming actually thick and fast. But he would have lost jobs, rejected jobs, because he was waiting and committing to doing a Blade film. Here's where we get real. Kevin Feige never wanted to do a Blade film. Kevin Feige never had Blade in his plans. Maheshala Ali brought Blade to Kevin Feige. That is a very key distinction to be aware of because that is very key to all of this. Feige never wanted Blade in all of this. He never had plans for Blade in any of this. So that already was obviously a stumbling block. So Feige, all through that, was like, okay, how do I fit in something I don't want into this large MCU Marvel universe that has made so much money? 
and I'll, I'll, I'll build, build up upon there. And I, I do feel the fact that Feige never wanted this is the real reason why he just does not see how this fits in. And this comes to the crux of this whole matter. <clears throat> see, guys, I'm a, I'm a film guy. And I'm of a time when you, you, you made a film. When you made a film, it wasn't a deal like, oh, this is for a sequel or this film adds into a universe. This was way before you, universes. Back in the day, back in the 90s, back in the 80s, back in the 90s, you just made a film. Now, if the film did well, oh, you would then be given a sequel. But when you're making a film, you're not making a film thinking about how does this film fit into a universe or how does this film fit into a potential sequel. You are making the best beginning, middle, and story you can that stands in and of itself and can stand alone. And what made that Blade film so good, which I still believe this is still the best film that Marvel has produced. Now, other guys have are really good comic movies, but in terms of a film, of a serious film, this, this is the best film. And this is coming from the Captain America guy, because you see, personally, I prefer my favorite film. My favorite film personally is The First Avenger. That's on a personal level. So my personal favorite is The First Avenger. But if I was being objective as a film guy, the best film, Blade. Blade is the best film. And there's a reason why you have to thank Snipes and Blade, um, Stephen Norrington for what they did, um, Stephen Dorff in how they really kickstarted the Marvel movies. But there's a very funny thing about Blade. So Blade 1, amazing, superb, incredible. Was a Snipes? An iconic performance. Also iconic and iconic performance where he literally created the character. Because you have to remember, no one gave a damn about the Blade comic. No one did. <laughs> okay? The Blade, like, if you want to think about Black Hands where the comic was notable, Spawn. Storm. And okay, really Black Panther, but really, like the real famous black character that's his comic book was big, number one is Spawn. And I'm so trying to correct all the, all the same single issues was spawned. But obviously, the film in 97, Michael J. White, <laughs> not so good. So this film pretty much defined the character. No one reads the comic book. This film is what, how people view Blade is this film. So Wesley Snipes and Stephen Norrington, the director, they are responsible for defining what Blade is and how we view Blade. So you have, so in the second film, why do you give him an army? You saw how good he was as a solo guy saying what's up. In the next film, he now has a whole team. Huh. In Iron Man 2, was he given a team? Or was he still Iron Man? In Iron Man 3, was he given a team or was he still Iron Man? So I was okay, fine. It's, it's cool. Um, maybe, you know, this is just like, you know, a, a novel idea. When we now get to Blade 3, we're going to get back to why Blade is Blade and Blade is the guy. So this is just like, you know, a novel idea that is somehow different. I've got the name of the director. It's the guy who did, um, oh gosh, um, Hellboy. Hellboy and Hellboy and the Golden Army. I always forget his name. The name is on the tip of my tongue. Mm, I'll probably remember it afterwards. Mexican director, I believe. So, Del Toro. Yeah, no, Del Toro. Yes, Del Toro. It's something Del Toro. I think, I think it's just Del Toro. But put it this way. Fine. Blade 3, we're going to go back to why Blade is, is that guy, you know. Let's just say this little detail. Do you realize that in Blade Trinity, they were trying to create a franchise for Ryan Reynolds? Now, it's a great full circle moment of how Ryan Reynolds brought Wizard Times back and then he thanks him for what he did. My hatred for Ryan Reynolds began with this film. Now, I felt that the anger was directed at the wrong individual because it wasn't him, it was David Goyer, it was the studio. But my anger was towards Ryan Reynolds because I felt that, wait, we just saw what this guy did in Blade One, who produced by far the hardest hitting main character in any comic book film we've ever seen. But you're trying to push him to the side to try to launch the career and the character of this random no-name dude known to Ryan Reynolds. And thus, Blade was was what was done. People will say, 
Conspiracy? You're reading too much into it? But I'm putting it out there. Does the industry want a tough, hardcore, black, male, comic book character to exist? That's what I want to know. Does the industry want a... Do, did the industry want this to succeed? Where you have a black male character that is strong, that has agency, that's an alpha male, that is not a sidekick. And we'll get to side, sidekicks. Did the industry want this, or did the industry try to shut this down and say, no, 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 no. We don't want a really strong black male character who isn't a sidekick to anybody, who isn't kicking anyone's side, but stands on his own two feet, and who is not a gimmick. Because what what does make what is beautiful about, about Blade? He doesn't have to be black. I'll get to Black Panther and how that's a gimmick. The whole point of Blade is, this could be played by any, his race doesn't define him. The, the thing, the juice about Blade is, he is a half vampire, half human, and a vampire who can operate in the day. That's it. It's not, oh, he's a black guy who's from the hood, or oh, he's, he's very cool, he listens to hip hop. No. His race has nothing to do with his character. All he is is, is a half vampire, half human who hunts down vampires based on what they did to his mother. So here lies the problem here. So let's so, so we look at Black Panther here. Do you read so and again when you watch Black Panther, what do you notice in Black Panther? The CGI wasn't wasn't very good. Like, you know, cool film, good everything, but the CGI was lacking. That was one of the weakest parts of the film. So Black Panther was made around the same time that Infinity War was being made. Avengers Infinity War. Feige and Marvel, they didn't believe Black Panther would succeed. All black cast, black male lead. Uh, but okay, we have to do because it is Black Panther and also maybe this gimmick of like the African um, warrior can do something, but uh, it's black. So they hardly gave a lot of money to Ryan Coogler. So because they have such little money, they didn't have the very best animators because all the best animators and all of the money was put into Avengers Infinity War. And lo and behold, Black Panther was a huge success. Feige and Marvel did not think Black Panther would be that much of a success. That is why they didn't put that much money or focus or resources to the film. It being a success, it was a mistake. But the thing about Black Panther is that this is a gimmick. It is a gimmick. It's a gimmick of, oh, but they're in Africa and it's a futuristic Africa where the character has to be, be black. And the gimmick is all of an African character. And as cool as that is, it still feels like a gimmick. And it is a gimmick that liberals love. You know, it is, it is a liberal gimmick, a liberal fairy tale. And see, personally for me, I am glad that Kogla is away from Marvel. Because I told you, I am a film fan first before a comic book movie fan. Hey, comic book movies are cool. I love my comic book movies. But I'm a bigger film fan. And I'm so happy that Kokla is doing Sinners, which many people say, that's the actual Blade movie that should be made. But I'm happy that Kokla is out of the system because, you see, guys, Marvel, with what's happened to Marvel, this is now, it's, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke. So I'm happy that Kokla is now forging his own career. Like, he used Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, that's a nice jump off to expand his name. And now just do your own projects and don't look back. You've, you've used the MCU launching pattern to expand your career, don't look back. Never go back to Marvel and just do your own mo movies. I don't care about this bomb. This ain't Captain America. This is Falcon. And this guy's a bomb. You see, there's a difference between... <laughs> she said, I, I love this. Oh, Feige, they would love this. He's the first black Captain America. He's the first black character. I'm black, 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 I'm black. And I can show you that I'm still the black guy. And I'm not a sidekick to Steve Rogers. And oh, can a black guy be a Captain America? I'm blah, 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 freaking blah. Falcon is a bomb. Falcon is a sidekick. 
Falcon kicks the side of Captain America. Falcon is Steve Rogers' side chick. Not sidekick, side chick. And that shield belongs to Steve Rogers. There's only one Captain America, and that is Steve Roy Rogers. I didn't know. I, I don't even know whether this guy's. Wait, what's even his real name? I'm going to call him Fat Falcon. So I have zero interest in that Captain America film. Zero interest at all. Because I'm sorry, you are just the black version of Captain America. You don't stand on your own. You have no agency. You are not a unique character in and of itself. You are not a like an Al Simmons of Spawn. You're not like an Aurora like, or Storm, or you're not even like a Blade. You took the shield off of Steve Rogers, and whatever the case may be, it will always be, eh, but you're not Steve Rogers. And you never will, will be. All you'll be is, hey, this is the black version of Captain America. This is black Captain America, black cap. You're black cap. That's what you are. I'm sorry. You're black cap. And I ain't paying, and I have zero time to watch a movie about black cap. Sorry, no. Because... This is the reality here. And this is what Mahashala Ali has to accept. This, this character doesn't work in the MCU. He doesn't. Black Cap works. 100% Black Cap. He, he, he works. This character doesn't work. To do Blade properly how it's supposed to be done, how does this work? It does not work in the MCU. Because the character, he's too hardcore. He's too real. He's too edgy. Like, when you watch that Blade film, how the hell does that film work in the MCU? Like, the MCU, the MCU is a freaking joke. Have you seen Deadpool and Wolverine? <laughs> it's bubblegum. It's a joke. Like, the Captain America series was trying to go places. It was trying to go there. But it's not when I watch Like, when you watch Blade, that is a hardcore freaking movie where this film is serious. It's pulling no punches. It is a serious film. MC is not serious. It's 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 a joke. So I do feel sorry for Marshall Ali. I feel sorry for him. And if you do more research, people say, okay, what are the issues? What are the issues? So again, I was I was doing some more research about this, going into Reddit and doing my research. I believe a lot of the issues was he wasn't really the main character in his own film. So some of the drafts of the scripts, it was about his daughter. And really, his daughter was much more of a prominent role than him. So his daughter was like a big part of the film. And I think Maya Goff, who's in like the film Maxine X and all those movies, she also, I think she was the main villain. But the main issue was he was not the main character. So you get a two-time Oscar winner and the drafts that you're sending are where he's like a side character or part of a collective. But guys, isn't that what happened in Blade, you're doing the same thing again. Where, for some strange reason, a black man can't be the main lead, the main guy hunting down vampires and everything revolves around him. Because that was not Blade. Blade, he, yes, Whistler was like the guy who he worked with, but everything revolved around Blade. He had the agency and he was the guy that was operating stuff. Do you, guys, do you know what was really weird? It's almost as if we've gone backwards in time. Where it feels as if, if this was the 90s, oh, a Blade film can be made, 100%. But in 2024, I don't think you can make a Blade film. Do you know how crazy that is? In 2024, I don't think you could actually, or any studio would actually greenlight a Blade film. So, and I, and I think, look, see, the, and I think this is the reality here is... Um, I'll say it. I'll say it. If a white two-time Oscar winner signed on to a project, do you think it would take three or four years for it to start being greenlit? I'm, I'm, guys, I'm just asking the questions. If a Caucasian two-time Oscar winner, not two-time Oscar nom nominee, a two-time Oscar winner was signed on to a project. Do you think it would take three or four years to have a final draft of a script and then we're going to start rolling? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. So the reality is this, is that Marvel is finished. It's done. 
I don't want to see Danny Jr.'s Doomsday. That is stupid. That's dumb. No one cares about the Fantastic Six or the Fantastic Five. I don't want to watch another Fantastic Six film. I'm sorry, no. That group is trash. Now, I would like X-Men, but the way Marvel is going and the way that they are operating, specifically to bring back Danny Jr., I don't, I don't care. A Blade film would have been interesting. But guys, deep down, deep down, I knew that. A Blade film in the MCU world doesn't work. Guys, look at all the films that the MCU have, have released. Where does a... Now, you can do a stupid Blade film, a dumb Blade, Blade film. How does it work? And you see, credit to Marshall Ali. Because we don't know the detail. And I think we're going to learn more detail as things come through. But from what I've, I've read, again, it's just what I've read, he could have very easily taken a BS script where you're a side piece to a character and guys are like, wait a minute, <laughs> how are you Blade and you're not even the main character in your own film where this film is mostly led by one woman <laughs> and the film really revolves around your daughter and how much you want to bet they're going to make her, they'll probably make her daughter light-skinned. But that's, that's a separate thing. Um, <laughs> so... But it just comes back to how I started this whole thing, which is that. So I started by saying, okay, it's taking you three or four years to make a Blade script. But as I've been doing this video, I know what the answer is. It's not, it's not the answer. It's like, as I said, Feige never wanted to do this. And Feige knew that I, this doesn't fit into my world. He tried to make it fit into his world, but it was like, I don't know. Because, and I think it was a clash of stars where Feige, okay, I want to do something in a particular tone, in a particular way that I think would fit in. And Mahashala is like, bro, as a two-time Oscar winner and my name, and Mahashala Ali knowing what Snipes was and what that Blade film was. Because Mahashala Ali, he knows the legacy of Blade. Because he knows that this film is, this is a, this film was a big deal. This film was a Big freaking deal. So he knows that I can't follow up this film with some BS. I can't. Because of just how important this film is and just how impactful this film was. So he knows that, bro, I can just come out and the first Blade film after Snipes and I'm some kind of like side chick, side piece. So that's right. But guys, I just think it is just sad. But guys, if you do the math, The world doesn't want that kind of a black hero. It simply doesn't. The world wants that bomber's war machine. The world wants that bomber's black cap, falcon, or whatever the heck heck is called. The world wants the gimmick Black Panther. But in terms of just like where it's just a character. Blade. Vampire booms. It's not about, oh, he's black. No, no, no. The, the black man. No, no. He's just blade. He's not a black vampire. Hunter. He's just a vampire hunter. <laughs> Who just happens to be black, but him being black doesn't even mean anything. He's just a black... He's, no, he's just a vampire hunter. It is just so crazy. So in 2024, we can't get a Blade film. 